Hello everyone, I welcome you all in the lecture series of Cognitive Ergonomics. In this we were discussing about the human cognitive abilities and skills. Earlier we learned about the perception, attention, memory principles and how these components are playing role towards the uh, human cognition and how human cognition is playing an important role in performance, efficiency and user satisfaction. We discussed several examples. We took examples from aviation. We even see, uh, saw the example from astronaut. And we discussed some of, couple of more examples like driving, riding, etc. Now, what you are seeing on your screen is a control panel from inside an airplane or an aircraft. And what you see here, several altimeters, several altitude meters, several types of measurement assessments are there. When you see the altitude, the command altitude is there, ranging from 0 to 3000, 4000 and so forth. Vertical velocity at what is speed, the plane is flying high or decreasing the velocity coming down the range, the fuel range and many other important parameters. Such information is very crucial for the pilot, for the aviator to fly in the sky and any alteration, any challenge if the aviator feels in understanding any of these uh, parameters then the human er error may occur and when human error occurs then the life of the human being is compromised. And that is why, and not, not only the life of uh, the aviator is compromised, but the but, but performance, efficiency, and safety is compromised. Altogether, this entire billion dollar system is compromised. Hence, it is very, very important for the designers to pay attention towards the uh, uh, perceptual principle, attentional principle and the memory principle. Now today what we are going to see that there are 13 design principles. What are these 13 design principles? We can have a four categories within these 13 pr uh, principles of design. One such principle which I am starting with is the perceptual principle. Now when we were discussing about the perception itself, we were talking about it Perception is the process of providing meaningful interpretation to the incoming sensory information. If I give you uh, an example of these uh, different levers to uh, tighten the screw or this traffic red light, red light, green light or yellow light. We have a meaningful interpretation of all these different lights. We have a meaningful interpretation of different sizes of the lever. If the size of the hole is a small, then a small lever will go, will fix it, not a big size lever, you, you are going to use it. If the size of the lever uh, screw is little bigger, then a bigger lever will be used. So pr principle of perception, providing a meaning to it, different stimuli is there, different association is there, different types of learning is there. First principle say make display legible. Or audible sounding make those display more sounding enough so that it should be so strong that a person has to put less effort in understanding it less cognitive load should be there for the user to understand what that object is about what is the task and what he has to he or she has to execute so when we are designing such principle, we have to make those displays a little bit more sound. For example, in the case of this traffic light. From a childhood we know what red means. Red means stop. Yellow, proceed. You can take a little pace. If you are moving from red light to green light, we can pace up a little bit. When we are moving from green light to red light, we have to slow down. So it's a transitory phase and green light, move easily, move forward 
and the principle of these three color codings we are using it at different control panels if you are a train driver you are going to three you see these three combinations if you are at nuclear power plant then you are going to have these three combinations if you are international space station you are going to see these three colors if you are using an air conditioner in your house you are going to see red color which means power is on or high voltage is there sometimes red is also indicating high voltage well green means the voltage is under control so if there is a power uh, more, more power is there in a system then the machine will turn off and it will blink red the moment you plug in your mobile charger it indicates red which means power is on power is there so such such displays are important and it provides an easiness to the human and why we are talking about this thing in coming uh, lectures we are going to understand about the human centered design to make human computer interaction more uh, uh, intellectual to make human computer interaction more uh, robust such principle such principle uh, perceptual principle is very very important second principle avoid absolute judgment limits there is nothing like absolute judgment something we have understood uh, recently there, there is nothing like zero or one there is always a range of responses are there if we if we talk about a color palette of vibgeor rainbow color palette seven colors are there seven absolute colors are there but within those ranges of violet to indigo there is several ranges of colors are there with different wavelengths with minor adjustments and hence we have we cannot when we when anybody has to provide uh, or make a decision it cannot be like that when you are lowering your plane from an altitude of 3000 to 2000 variation will be there variation in velocity will be there no two pilots no two aviators are going to descend the plane with the same speed so there cannot be any absolute judgment in that regard so we have to tend to avoid that aspect this also provides a degree of freedom if we do not avoid absolute judgment then the system becomes stringent and there will be less scope of flexibility over there perceptual principle also talk about the top down processing so if you all remember in previous lecture we were talking about the three different types of perceptual processing top down processing bottom up processing and unitization here what we are talking about top down processing we have to understand our user is not a fool he do have some insight he do have some concept he do have some understanding about the process itself hence we can trust on him and we can rely with on on his or her knowledge and based on that we can design a system which has a top down processing redundancy gain an alternative is required we cannot just go with one principle an alternative principle is required a contingency principle should be there for in instance in the case of red yellow and green light all have different perceptual meaning but their positioning their priority their preference order plays a crucial role red should be visible from far distance and it's a important factor and element in the case of traffic rules so red is placed at the top then comes a yellow lowering down your speed pacing up your speed descending and ascending of his speed should be in the middle because that is a transitory phase and then comes the green color light which indicates you can move without any hindrance or difficulty or challenge the last principle say discriminability discrimination should be there if discrimination is not there then we may have a difficulty 
if you talk about discrimination let us take about the uh, let us take these two levers if you see the size of it a minor increase is there but the curvature the turning can be a little bit more and this adds pronouncing effect between these two types if we compare this and this it is very obvious to make a distinction but when it is these two then it may be little difficult so how can we make this discrimination more pronounced just like this red and green can we make it can we bring such principle here with the levers also it may be possible it may not be possible to have such understanding in some context it may work in some context all five principle of uh, perception may work may not work our objective is not to fulfill all these five principles in any one design our objective is to ensure that the principle of perception should be followed when we are designing such uh, when we are looking some design aspects when we are designing the control panel of a cockpit when we are designing control panel of a naval um, uh, naval ship when we are designing a control panel of a train then such principles are required the lever for the brake and the lever to pace up the engine should be far apart should be of different and distinct sign the buttons to shut off and to turn on the engine should be far apart or even a single button can be used to turn on and turn off so not all principles should be followed but few of such perceptual principles should be followed then when we were talking about the principle of uh, um, information categorization then we discussed about the schema model mental model and then the uh, cognitive map in that we were discussing about the mental model and in that we were putting a lot of emphasis upon the uh, designer's mental model and the user's mental model these two models should be aligned these the closer these model two models are better the design will be because the designer understands the need of its user and with that understanding with that information he is designing a system similarly in this direction mental model principle addresses that the principle of pictorial realism pictorial pictorial rea realism means realism is coming from a world reality and pictorial means graphical or schematic representation picture pre presentation so what do we mean let us take an example of thermometer the old thermometer some of you might have seen it some of you may not have experienced it so there is a liquid mercury inside it when you put this thermometer in the mouth of a uh, uh, person who is suffering from a high fever then the mercury increases it increases and after a while it stops the level at which it stops it indicates the body temperature now anything which is increasing when there is an increase in body temperature so it should increase increase and that increase is represented in the form of increase in mercury so this is pictorial realism similarly when we talk about this altitude meter what you see on your screen 0 to 1000 feet each line is indicating 100 feet and this is 1000 feet so this is all together 10000 feet uh, altimeter as the person aviator is flying high as he is going up the altimeter should increase and that is what we are seeing here but is this a clear indicator of an increase of an ascending order will the aviator get confused because its pictorial representation is similar like a clock so are we going to get confused is the aviator going to get confused with the clock or aviator has an understanding towards it that with an increase in the number as the needle 
is moving in the clockwise direction 2000 feet then 3000 feet then 4000 feet 5000 feet and this small meter here is indicating the increase between 2000 to 3000 feet how this increases there at what pace at what rate hence is it close to pictorial realism the answer to this question is no the meter the alt meter that is why the altitude meter is these days is represented in a form of a vertical bar and there is a needle towards it which shows an increase in the number which which indicates clearly there is an increase so the needle will go up the the arrow will indicate that the measurement the numbers and the as you will increase the need the more uh, the number will be increasing as you will decrease in altitude the number will decrease it is easy to rep represent that and that is more uh, close to the pictorial realism now the principle of moving part is similar in this direction also that as you are moving anything which is moving ahead will increase increase in velocity increase in speed increase in altitude so with this clock if you take then there is an increase when the number when the needle is moving from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 there is an increase there is an increase in the altitude however is it a clear indicator when we decrease the speed when we decrease when we descend from high altitude to low altitude will the needle go back and if the needle is going back anti clockwise will it involve cognitive dissonance will it involve any sort of interference because we have a tendency to look at the clock and clock always goes in clockwise direction rather than anti clockwise direction we haven't experienced in reality any clock going backward hence it it may involve a conflict hence this design of, uh, for the altitude or altimeter may fail the user will have a lot of problem in the case of velocity it may work as you might have seen in your cars there is a speedometer which shows you the increase in speed there is an accelerator meter which shows to what acceleration you are riding, driving the car so this is the uh, principle about the mental model how you have a mental representation and how it exists in the real world if there is a match towards it then it becomes easier if there is no match then it becomes little difficult principle based on attention previously we discussed about the um, uh, attention and uh, attention types attention is selective in nature attention is shiftable in nature attention is sustained in is sustaining sustainable in nature attention is divisible in nature based on that based on that principle of attention what we understand minimizing the information access cost how can we minimize the cost of accessing the information if anything is present in the environment we are prone to process that information and then attention comes into light when attention comes into light then we divide our attention between different information then we shift our attention from one information to another information to another information to some information we pay more attention so we sustain our attention and we do not pay attention to the other information we select information among uh, multitude of information as i was telling you and giving you an example of cocktail party effect yesterday several sounds are there but we tend to select an information our brain has developed the ability to select information also our brain has developed an ability to process all information so how can we do that we minimize the information access this reduces the cognitive load this reduces the burden on our human cognition as a result it encourages the performance efficiency and user satisfaction so another principle proximity compatibility principle proximity closeness when all these four dots are closed you club them together 
when these two dots are closed then we can club them together but when these two dots are far apart we treat them distinct another thing the information which is present in the bar form the information which is present in the bar and number form the information which is present joined together because they are closed the information which is pr presented in secluded form separate forms the information presented in the form of an arrow as you can see here what is this we are trying to reduce the information we are trying to help the user to process information without any difficulty if we are presenting this arrow this means something is increasing from bottom to the top there is an there is an increase it has to be plus but the moment the arrow sign is reversed we understand something is decreasing this is minimizing the information cost we are minimizing the cost we are providing an aid to the user to understand that there is something which is increasing there is something which is decreasing then at some places we can use the numbers how much fuel is there should be represented in the form of a number or should be represented in the form of a arrow and a bar like you might have seen the fuel tank one side it says end and one side it says full and then there is a needle it moves in clockwise direction once you have a full tank your indicator is showing this as you decrease as the fuel decreases the needle moves to the e we use our visual representation and we see that there are several bars are there and each of these smaller units indicate to what kilometer or meter we can go ahead so principle of multiple resources are also there where we are using such information and attention is playing a major role here now the final principle is the principle of memory what do we see here is that we we know that the information is present in the environment in the world out there but how can we acquire that knowledge how can we understand that knowledge one way to replace our stored memory is to take the help of visual information visual information can ind indicate many such information it takes less in less space the moment i draw this figure some people will say it's a sun the moment i draw like this people will say it's a cloud the moment i draw like this it's a tree this is what we are replacing the memory with the visual information and these information are present in the world outside world so such information is are there principle of predictive uh, pre predictive aiding means can we predict and these prediction should be helpful and supportive for instance as you can see on your screen there is an indicator of this traffic sign which indicates take a turn this indicates take a u turn this indicates you can only go straight but there is no turning allowed this indicates go slow this indicate there is a construction going on and this indicate slow down there is a speed breaker these are predictive aiding these are predictive aiding 
people are using principle of consistency these are international traffic rules whatever uh, uh, the principles are being followed in india the same principle traffic principles are being followed in european countries or in any northern countries now the idea is that the principle of consistency is very important if the principle if the principle is uh, or all these informations are consistent enough then with without any difficulty without any challenge any user can execute the task with e with easiness and independent of context the way you are driving a car in india when you go to any european country or northern uh, countries then you can do the same way now the principle of consistency also talks about the office microsoft office everyone is familiar with this what does it say predictive aiding and principle of consistency together what do i mean with that the same office is being used in the microsoft and the same office is being used in the os mac os and the same office is being also used in the ubuntu and in the ubuntu also the principle of consistency is same powerpoint is there outlook is there excel is there for data and recording and analysis documentation word is there p stands for powerpoint and this is predictive aiding we are providing you the aid you have to make a prediction excel excel starts with e instead of x but the sound is there so we use the word excel the word outlook what we understand we understand that the system itself is providing an aid such principles such principles play a crucial role in the designing so the user has to put less and less effort why are we talking about these 13 principles the when the aviator is flying high when the aviator is handling a complicated task complex task then he or she has to ensure that the failure and the chances of error should be minimal and slim hence these 13 design principles are helping and supporting the aviator to fly an aeroplane without any difficulty and challenge now what you see on your screen is the spacing at what is spacing the information should be placed in so the primary control should be very close to an individual uh, to the individual so that the individual can access the information without any trouble without any problem and without putting any effort into it so distance to left and right of seat reference point left and right uh, reference seat so the primary control should be at such a position so that i can reach to the left hand side and right hand side without uh, easiness without uh, with easiness without any trouble or challenges then an emergency control system can be placed a little far primary control turn on turn off are the prime primary control system then comes the emergency control and precise adjustment secondary control system not so much important a little bit at the periphery reachable position <coughs> and then comes the secondary control the other controls can be fueling the tank cctv cameras ca controlling the radio frequency sending messaging phone call all those things can be placed at secondary placing position now what we what what we understand with this thing that positioning of these items on a control panel is equally important and when the positioning of these items are being addressed then the principle of uh, uh, 13 designs principles is very important for us to discuss attention principle mental model memory model at a uh, perceptual model so such models are equally important how are we having a mental representation if i want under threat full situation the machine should be turned off and i should manually turn it off so manual operation should be very in, is a primary control system it should be very close 
Now some more displays are there, alerting displays like these just CCTV footage cameras are there. So that is an alerting, alerting displays. People are using those displays to put place them so that we can have a better look. Now if you see all these um, CCTV footage, you can see that several types of uh, video recordings are being placed. Are we able to control them? Are we able to access those visual displays? Does all 13 design principles uh, are being followed here? And if yes, it has been followed, then it becomes a good design. However, when it fails, then the design has faults in it. It requires an update, an upgrade. Similarly, the alerting display can be auditory in nature. So this is a visual display, alerting display, which is providing an information through CCTV footage, who is coming, who is going out, who is creating nuisance, at which floor, at what time frame. But what they are saying, how they are interacting, that thing is missing here. So an aid can be taken, uh, can be provided, that is an Alexa these days. Now certain places, labels are also being there, labels are everywhere, labels you see behind a, a motor car engine, a scooter, labels are there on your shoe, labels are there on your pen, labels are there on your laptop, everywhere the labels are there. What does label do? Label provides an aid. The label which is being provided to you should have a similar mental model. If the, there is a less mental proximity, if the space between the mental proximity is close, then it is easy for the person to process the information. If the mental proximity is very far between the two different thoughts, two different stimuli, then you will never be able to associate them together. So the label, what it does, it provides visibility. Why do we use label? So that it can be visible, it should be visible. Labeling can be seen as red color, blue, green color, um, yellow color. Similarly, let us say zebra crossings, white and black, but we change it to yellow and black. Then it has different visibility, different information. Different types of fire extinguishers are there. Different types of visibilities should be there. You cannot use one fire extinguisher for all types of fires. Fires through electric current, fires through um, uh, inflammable substance, fires through flammable substance. All our fires are different, so there, will, there should be different fire extinguishers. But how can we understand the difference between the two? So visibility, as you can see on your screen, there is a temperature, there is a temperature and then there is a speed. You increase the speed, the needle will move. There is an increase in temperature, there is a needle again. It can start from 30 to, uh, 37 degree and it can go up to, let us say, 55 degree or a representation like this, visibility presentation like this, what kind of emotion is this? Which direction one has to move? Left direction. No ladders or ladders in the left. Discrimination should be there. There is a discrimination between the temperature and the speed. Do we have discrimination here? No. Can we have discrimination? Shall we have an meter like this which shows the increase in temperature. It should be easy for us. Now when we are talking about this thing, the speed can go like this. But, this, but then we have to understand, is it uh, meaningful? If it is not meaningful, then such representation is going to increase chaos in participant's mind. Is this meaningful? The sad face. Is this meaningful? The girl's image. And then also we have seen that labels are being used for the locations. Different types of locations are there. People have used labels to demonstrate that and to provide an information related to that. 
let us conclude what we have learned is the principle of design the principle of design plays an important role in the discipline of cognitive ergonomics why because to follow the principle of design we are using the cognitive human cognition into consideration and what type of human cognition we are uh, considering into uh, considering is the perceptual principle mental model principle pr principle of attention and memory principle where we are understanding that the meaningful interpretation uh, is important and how we are using that information in the design top down processing should be maximized people should be capable enough redundancy gain should be there people should be capable enough to make a discrimination people should be able to make a discrimination based on perceptual information here as you can see on different types of fire extinguishers that fire extinguisher a type is through ordinary combustible wood paper rubber plastic and many and many other type of plastics b flammable liquids and gases so fire extinguisher of b class with this red color is going to address only flammable and inflammable substances and now you will also see that yesterday when we were talking about the ergo linguist then or, or previously when we were talking about the ergo linguist then how the language is playing role in the ergonomics how language is aiding the ergonomics how language is ensuring there should be high performance high efficiency high user satisfaction the chances of error should be minimal for the literates when you see the c fire involving electrical equipment different types of fire extinguishers there you cannot put water in when when the electric current is there you will be shocked what is high conductor of electricity so you need different types of extinguisher in the case of flammable substances you can put water in the case of uh, a category you can put water it will extinguish the fire but not in the case of c in the case of d combustible metal and combustible metal alloys the alloys which are very hot takes time to cool off what kind of coolant we extinguisher we can use class d and the class k due to fire in cooking appliances fire in cooking appliances combustible cooking media vegetable animal oil and fats you put water into this the flame will ex be uh, increased because there is oxygen uh, hydrogen present in the water which will react with the oil and become more combustible an explosion may occur so instead of extinguishing the fire you are increasing the fire so you need fire extinguisher with k category and this is what we see how the ergo linguist is playing a role how different color codings are being used to visually communicate how the principle of perception is being used different colors have different meaning and different labels all together the uh, alerting displays and labels are being used to make a, to bring clarity and highlight the relevance and significance of the labels and we rest the case here and in next class we are going to understand about the human computer interaction thank you